Today's episode of the Watson Weekly Podcast is sponsored by Commerce Tools. The world of commerce is fast-paced and constantly changing. Commerce Tools, the global leader in commerce and creator of the powerfully composable mock architecture, enables commerce leaders to turn possibilities into reality. Commerce Tools helps businesses go from underperforming to overachieving, and from keeping up to setting the pace, all at a lower total cost. Go to commercetools.com to learn how to get started. It's December 4th, 2023, and this is the Watson Weekly, your essential e-commerce digest. Today on our show, our Black Friday Cyber Monday wrap-up, Shein files for IPO, Amazon becomes the biggest delivery business in the United States, Kohl's decides that e-commerce is not for them. And finally, the Investor Minute, which contains five items this week from the world of venture capital, acquisitions, and IPOs. But first, in our shopping cart full of news, our Black Friday Cyber Monday wrap-up. Well, folks, it's official. Mobile shopping has taken over Black Friday. Given the absence of discounts and inventory in stores, it looks like the American consumer chose to stay on their couch. And the couch has declared victory. Black Friday stats I've read over and over confirm it. Retail stores growth seems flat to slightly up, while digital is up much bigger. Consumers are valuing convenience. Why get off the couch to get the same discounts that I can get on the couch? MasterCard Spending Pulse reported that Friday e-commerce sales increased 8.5% year-over-year, while in-store sales increased 1.1%. Hardly a doorbuster sale. Of course, all the e-commerce platforms like Adobe, Salesforce, Shopify, BigCommerce also released their holiday numbers, which I kind of consider to be almost propaganda numbers. I mean, these are useful to understanding the momentum of the platforms, but not very useful to determine what the consumer is doing. As of today, I didn't see Spending Pulse release their Cyber Monday numbers yet, and other outlets seem to be reporting significant growth in Cyber Monday. As far as Cyber Monday itself goes, my, how much you've changed. When Cyber Monday was coined in 2005 by the National Retail Federation, you had to go to work to access the internet. And so on Monday was the first day after Thanksgiving you can do any online shopping at all. Fast forward to 2023, where 60% of total internet traffic is mobile, Cyber Monday means something very different. Now, deals start in mid-October, and Amazon's deal day now effectively starts the promotional season, which ends on Cyber Monday. It's the last day that consumers can expect heavy discounting to continue, which means it's now a convenient bookend to the holiday season instead of being more cyber than any other day. In between mid-October and Cyber Monday, it's a mobile world today, and that's likely going to continue in future years. Our second story, Shein files for IPO. It looks like Congress and other regulators have just been put on the clock. Shein has filed confidentially for its IPO, likely in early 2024. Here are some details. J.P. Morgan, Goldman Sachs, and Morgan Stanley are all lead underwriters on the offering. And the company's last valuation was at $66 billion. Sheehan has done an excellent job making a number of moves recently, which has set the table for this moment. Getting in bed with the top investment banks like Goldman and J.P. Morgan doesn't hurt. Sheehan's joint ventures with Forever 21 and its parent company, Spark Group, which is owned by Authentic Brands. They started re-entering the Indian market with a partnership and planning to diversify its manufacturing there and in other places. I do have a few questions to consider in all this. First, who stands to win in this? First and foremost, Authentic Brands Group stands to win big and on a relatively recent partnership. A lot depends on the valuation here. Other Chinese retailers like ByteDance may see this as paving a clearer path to the North American market. I'm sure they're watching it very closely. Finally, what's the valuation? It's not even clear to me how you value a company like this and what institutions would be interested. Existential risks abound, but ultimately there's a lot of money to be made that the brakes will not be put on this listing by Wall Street. Instead, 
Washington, D.C. would have to do something about this. But this isn't a show about politics, so we'll assume politicians will do what they do best, which is not much. That means for all of us, Sheehan is becoming a public company, which should give it a new infusion of capital. I think the entire retail market in the United States should worry, not just the fast fashion industry. Regardless of how horrible you might feel Sheehan is, they're also a learning, data-driven company, the likes of which we may not have seen since Amazon itself. Our third story. Amazon has become the biggest delivery business in the United States. Well, the fantastical has happened in the last year. Amazon has won the delivery business in the United States. And to be honest, this is kind of a yawn moment. Dave Clark, who built a lot of the logistics network out at Amazon after taking over from Jeff Wilkie, predicted over a decade ago that Amazon would need to get serious in the delivery business because no carrier could actually handle its volume. Of course, he was right. And Amazon at the time was ridiculed by pretty much everyone. But most especially Fred Smith of FedEx, who said famously that Amazon would have to invest tens of billions of dollars to match FedEx's capabilities. Which, of course, thank you for that roadmap. That's what Amazon went on and did. Amazon invests about $20 billion in supply chain each year, which is about four to five UPSs. Here are a few stats taken from a Wall Street Journal article on the topic. Amazon will have delivered more than 5.9 billion parcels by the end of 2023 after delivering more than 5.2 billion parcels by the end of 2022. The success of the Amazon program in the last mile is primarily due to the Delivery Service Partner Program, which is a franchise. In truth, the Wall Street Journal headline was actually hit last year, so its title was kind of misleading, but it's still worth talking about it. And the gap between Amazon and FedEx and UPS is only widening and accelerating each year. And it's not even close. Each year that goes on, Amazon is just pulling away. How long before Amazon is sending everyone's parcels? And our last story. Kohl's decides that e-commerce is not for them. In a world where almost no one can be just a retailer and make any money, that's exactly where Kohl's is headed back to the safety of their four-store walls. And with it, the direction they have chosen will seal their fate in a canon of declining retailers like Bed Bath & Beyond, Sears, JCPenney, and others. Here are a few things mentioned in their recent earnings. Kohl's sales fell 5.2% year-over-year, but more importantly, net income fell 39%. Store comparable sales were up slightly year-to-date. And this is the money quote for me. The digital business is what's really bringing us down. Oh, really? That pesky digital business. What about that pesky customer who's not consistently walking in your door? Kohl's has had a patchwork of CEOs and strategies in the last few years, and activist investors continue to circle the firm. Did I mention that the middle market of retail is an active dead zone like that big garbage patch in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico? Usually, these activist shakeups do result in changes though not always for the better. Many times, it's simply too late or the new CEO is very confident they know the right thing, kind of like in Bed Bath & Beyond with private label, uh, wrong. Even if a business can improve, does it improve that much relative to the competition which has not stumbled? In 2023, why would you step into a Kohl's if you could step into a Walmart, TJ Maxx, or HomeGoods? someone needs to ask this very reasonable question before deciding their next strategy. And to be clear for the last time, e-commerce is no longer a channel. It's an extension of your overall digital experience. If you're saddled with 10 to 15 year old technology stack with doesn't support the needs of your buyers where and how they want to shop, your business is already dead. You just don't know it yet. Hey, Watsonians. Did you know that Get Here acquired Fresh Direct? If you are in our online community, you would. So stay on top of what's going on in e-commerce and join the conversation. Visit community.rmwcommerce.com today. Now a word from our sponsor, Commerce Tools. When a multi-billion dollar beauty brand's e-commerce platform neared the end of its life, the entire business was at risk, including the ability to serve customers. By switching to Commerce Tools and embracing a more flexible mock architecture, the retailer's vision for connecting in-store and personalized shopping experiences became a reality. The brand can now roll out new features within days. 
securing its position as a modern brand that uses technology to its advantage. If you're being held hostage by your technology platform and your developers have thrown up their hands, tell them to start a free trial at commercetools.com today. It's that time, friends, for our Investor Minute. We have five items on the menu today. First, Keychain raises $18 million in seed funding. Pre-launch CPG manufacturing marketplace Keychain has raised $18 million in seed funding. Have we not seen these manufacturing marketplaces before? What makes Keychain unique? Second, Mars acquires UK chocolate brand Hotel Chocolat. Mars has acquired premium chocolate brand Hotel Chocolat for 534 million pounds. Mars is following the premiumization trend by acquiring a struggling luxury chocolate brand. Third, the body shop sold to Aurelius Group. Natura & Co. has announced the sale of the body shop to private equity firm Aurelius Group for 207 million pounds. Natura & Company continues to simplify its operations as it also sold Aesop to L'Oreal earlier in the year. Fourth, Sienna AI raises $4.7 million in seed funding. Sienna AI, which develops a customer service automation platform, raised $4.7 million in seed funding. Is this another version of conversational commerce? Why would brands want to offload customer service to a bot? And finally, the Home Depot to acquire International Designs Group, IDG. Home Depot has acquired International Designs Group, which operates distributor construction resource for an undisclosed amount. Home Depot is targeting the pro customer who uses showrooms to side on materials for projects. And today's final word of the week for December 4th, 2023 is relief. Congrats, folks. You made it through the busiest part of the season. It's all downhill from here. Time to start thinking about 2024. That's all for this week. Till next time, Watsonians. Hi, I'm Rick Watson, CEO and founder of RMW Commerce Consulting and host of the Watson Weekly Podcast, your essential e-commerce digest. Our production partner for the series is Citizen Racecar. The show is produced by Jose Baez. Production manager, Gabriela Montaqui. To hear new episodes of the show every Monday morning, subscribe now at rmwcommerce.com slash Watson Weekly and wherever you get your podcasts.